Welcome to today's video where we are going to learn about the Kowati. The lifespan of the Kowati is 7 years in the wilderness with up to 14 years lifespan in expert care. They gestate for 77 days and their weight at birth can be between 3.5 to 6.5 ounces. Usually, 4 to 6 siblings are birthed at one time. Kowatis can grow in length almost 20 inches from the tail and can weigh between 2.2 to 3.3 pounds. The Kowati is an agile, fruit-loving, meat-eating insectivore, an opportunistic omnivore that is as at home in the trees as it is snuffling along the forest floor. Weighing as much as a large house cat, these mostly diurnal mammals are native to Central and South America and parts of the southwestern United States. Visually, the Kowati resembles a cross between a dog, a monkey, and a raccoon. It is actually related to the raccoon. Wherever they live, Kowatis play an important mid-level role in food chains. They consume a wide range of insects, invertebrates, and plant matter. They are prey for wildlife like jaguars, ocelots, jaguarundis, foxes, boas, birds of prey, and even humans. Being mid-food chain has its perks and its downside. With its tail-up posture, long, mobile snout, and formidable front claws, the Kowati sniffs along the forest floor in search of beetles, grubs, ants, and termites, also other assorted prey. Its long, muscular, semi-prehensile tail helps it balance in the trees. On the ground, its tail usually stands straight up, perhaps helping them keep track of each other in the vegetation. There are four types of coatis, two in the Nazwa genus and two in the Nazuela genus. The white-nosed coati, the Nazwa narica, ranges from Arizona to northwestern Colombia. The Nazwa genus ranges from Colombia to northern Argentina and Uruguay. The mountain coati, Nazuela olivacea, ranges from the Andes of western Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and northern Peru. It appears to be uncommon across its range. Its upland forest habitat is being converted to agriculture and pine plantations, putting more pressure on the coati. Nazuela neridensis lives in northern Venezuela, and it is endangered. According to the Encyclopedia of Mammals, Kowati is not short for Kowatimundi. Females and their young form bands of 20 individuals or more, while adult males are solitary. This difference in social structure confused biologists who initially described the solitary males as a separate species. In an elegant study that appeared in Brain, Behavior, and Evolution, Scientists compared brain sizes of males and females in three provocnoid species, raccoons, kinkajous, and coatis. The only sex difference in neural brain tissue was in the social coatis. Females possessed a larger frontal cortical volume than their male counterparts due to their expanded, lifelong social ties. It takes brain power to make and keep friends. The study supports the principle that behavioral specializations correspond to an expansion of neural tissue involved in that function. Hopefully, female coatis won't get a big head about it. The mountain coatis' elongated body is a grayish sooty brown with a notable bushy tail that is ringed with yellowish gray and dark brown bands. Its flexible, pointed pig-like snout used for sniffing out food under leaf litter and in crevices, has earned it the nickname Hog-Nosed Raccoon. The Kuwati has double-jointed ankles, which can rotate 180 degrees, and this allows it to climb down tree trunks head first. Strong front claws are ideal tools for excavating grubs, lizards, and spiders from logs and burrows. Habitat and Diet Kowatis enjoy wide-ranging habitat types, including tropical lowlands, dry high-altitude forest, oak forest, mesquite grassland, and forest edges. The forests of the Colombian Andes support two Kowati species, the aforementioned Nazuela olivacea and the Nazwa nazwa. 
The mountain Kawati may be found at 6,500 feet and more abundantly at 9,800 feet in the Andean forests and the high peramos, which means barren plain. At home in the trees and on the ground, Kawatis may inhabit areas near humans, and tourists may be treated to a band scampering through their hotel grounds. While Kawatis may build rudimentary roosts in the trees for nighttime sleeping, pregnant females build sturdy, elaborate nests in which to have their young. Following the breeding season in February and March, females leave the band and build a nest in a tree, where she gives birth to two to seven altricial, or helpless, babies after a gestation of about 77 days. She will nurture the little ones for about six weeks before rejoining the band and introducing her offspring. Through reciprocal altruism, females all help each other protect and raise their young. Like Naswa, the mountain Nazuela likely forages opportunistically on insects, small vertebrates, and fruit. Even carrion can make the diet cut. Their diet may change over time, as juveniles plump up on invertebrates and fruit, while adults bulk up on vertebrates. Male coatis forage alone, so they likely can catch more lizards and rodents. Females that forage in bands use their powerful olfactory sense to detect beetles, grubs, termites, and other small subsoil wildlife in their habitat. They may also catch frogs, lizards, and mice if it's a good day. Family Life Coatis are diurnal and maintain territories. Females stay active in their band looking after youngsters, finding food, and socializing. There appears to be a dominance hierarchy within the group. Grooming helps establish bonds. Adult males are solitary most of the year and do not help raising the young, so their to-do list is much shorter. Finding enough to eat is always a top priority. The mountain Kuwati faces a range of threats related to Andean biodiversity loss. In many areas, it is considered a pest due to its occasional predation of chickens and damage to potato crops. Kuwatis are also hunted for their meat and fur. They also may be collected as pets, though not for the light of heart due to their lifelong curiosity, strength, and agility. As pets, they have been likened to keeping a strong, super-smart toddler who never grows up. However, Kuwatis are wildlife and should not be kept as pets. Kuwatis can defend themselves from predators with their mighty, dexterous front feet and claws. They may be taken by Andean bears on occasion, another opportunistic feeder. Females are far more social than males year-round, but males need to make their needs known in a short period of time for breeding purposes. They try to groom adult females in a band and appear submissive to them to entice breeding. Kuwatis have a broad range of communications, including chirping, grunting, and snorting. When startled, they have been observed to leap into a tree, making clicking and woofing noises. Females use a barking vocalization to warn bandmates of danger. They make a whimpering sound in order to keep their young close by during the weaning period. Males use scent to establish territories and fend off rivals during the mating season. Grooming is used by males to endear them to females for breeding. Females use grooming to establish and cement bonds with other adult females in her band. Females live in bands along with their young. Males leave the band at around two years old to live a solitary life until the breeding season, when they groom their way back into the female's good graces, temporarily. After breeding, which occurs in the trees, females become aggressive toward the males and drive them out of the band, lest they attempt to kill their young and jeopardize the next generation. Males then go back to their solitary bachelor life. Males tend to be more nocturnal, perhaps to better protect themselves from predators since they do not have the luxury of safety in numbers as the females do. Also, this strategy allows adult males to minimize resource competition and maximize foraging efficiency. At around six weeks of age, mothers rejoin wire forests to live. Some fun facts about the Kawati. They are known for their strong, nimble claws and keen intelligence. 
Ancient Mayan people revered Cuatimundis, believing that they could talk and that they possessed supernatural powers. Cuatimundis are part of the raccoon family, along with red pandas, ringtails, kinkajous, and olingos. And that's our video for today. If you enjoyed, please press like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.